Hello everyone, welcome to another episode. This time continuing with the same workflow as the last couple of videos using the three step sort of program starting with the 3D modeling phase then jumping into the lighting and the rendering phase and then finally last but not least the most fun part of the process is the 2d paint over which takes the longest um, but yeah here doing another vehicle again using a lot of references there's a lot of references that i'm using from military vehicles and again doing the same thing here just grabbing a lot of pieces of photos from various armored personnel carriers and armored fighting vehicles and using that as a base and taking parts of it which i like and sort of mishmashing and, and kit bashing different components to come up with something that i think will create a strong design um, this time around i'm going to be using also unreal engine again for the the rendering and the lighting phase but this time adding a little bit more of an environmental aspect to it as well which is a little bit more of a challenge but with unreal engine there uh, it comes with a tool set called um, quicksil mega scans which is a library of scanned assets which is great because it comes directly with the engine and you have a full suite of these assets that you can use whether it be textures that you can apply to the ground or to to really any model that that you have and it also comes with a bunch of um, 3d scanned objects it has a lot of very natural assets so i i think that the quicksil mega scan strength it really lies on the the natural elements so they have a ton of of rocks and and foliage and all these natural elements that you can really use to to create a scene pretty quickly and pretty efficiently so i'm taking advantage of it for this piece here just grabbing some foundational elements from their library and using that to compose my scene so again if you're using something like blender or any other rendering software it's essentially doing the same thing like with those with those other rendering engines you can always buy you can always purchase assets from from many many websites for example there's turbo squid and and a bunch of other websites that you can grab assets from that i, I probably don't know about which is the same idea with with quixel megascans it's just that quixel megascans uh is now part of epic and so it comes directly with unreal and there is yeah like once you download unreal engine 5 it comes with it right out of the box and it's there for you to use so i highly encourage that you that you check it out and so here again i'm not the, the main the main goal for this piece is the vehicle design and the composition so you know a lot of artists would would maybe think that wait like you're using these ready-made elements isn't that sort of like cheating well yes and no i guess right well it's cheating in a way that you that you're sort of cutting down the process and you're cutting corners to get the result that you want but at the end of the day you are composing your own scene right and you're using these pieces just simply as leverage as as a tool to get you to the to the place that you want to get to right so and now jumping into the 2d paint over of the paint over phase of the process here taking it into photoshop and then doing the paint over so yeah going back to the whole idea of like whether using ready-made assets is cheating or not 
again at the end of the day if you're going to compose a, a, an entire scene that have many many different layers of elements that's involved into it it's not really cheating right it's kind of like saying you know if you're drawing with uh, a, a traditional pen and paper or you know acrylic paints on, on a canvas or something it's kind of like saying that purchasing the paint or purchasing the canvas is cheating because it's it's not something that you made on your own right at the end of the day it's really just a tool so it would be very different if i if i were to say that the the scanned assets that i'm using from quicksil you know for example if i download a a piece of rock from it right and i just i just right off the bat call that my own then absolutely that would be cheating but if it was something that i'm using to create something that's bigger than, than that thing itself if i'm using it as a as a as a tool to create a, a bigger scene then you know again it's just really a tool and for this scene itself the vehicle really is the focal point and it's something that i'm basically building from scratch So again, the reason that I wanted to talk about that is because there's always this question of, you know, as an artist, you should build everything from scratch. And, you know, that's not really always going to be the case, right? So like you see here, there's uh, two characters as well. Uh, these have been purchased from, I believe, I, I believe I purchased these from Turbo Squid. Yeah, here now adding elements to the to the design of the vehicle trying out a lot of things and to be completely honest with you the the process of the vehicle design for this piece in particular was quite quite a challenge it, it was very very difficult because i honestly i skipped steps and uh as a result it was a lot of trial and error a lot of tr trying different things that didn't end up working um and so the initial sort of block out would I, I i think drastically change as, as you'll see as this video goes on because yeah like things just didn't really work out right from the bat right off the bat and i, I was trying a bunch of different things to to really make something work you know but that was really a result of me just jumping ahead what I should have done really was create a set of thumbnails, you know, like very, very low, low cost, low fidelity and very, very cheap pieces of, of thumbnails that really indicated the design of the vehicle. And so if I, if I did that, I would have been able to sort of like really think through the design of the vehicle before I took it to this level where, you know, it costs a lot more in terms of effort because it's, it's a much higher fidelity stage at this point, right? So any changes that I would make here would be a lot more costly than if I were to do it uh, at the very beginning where, you know, I'm sketching these very, very small thumbnails and, and just trying out different things because it's super quick to do. And I hope that makes sense. But yeah, at the very beginning, it's always a good idea, especially if you're creating um, a sort of made up design that you start with, with, with a bunch of different thumbnails that really 
span a range of possibilities first and kind of ask questions like what does this vehicle do what is the purpose of this thing to begin with right because that will really inform a strong design and that's something that i didn't really do here it was just you know me blocking a vehicle out of reference without really asking those questions and kind of jumping the gun and as a result i i sort of really paid for it i mean i think i still ended up with with a design that i was quite satisfied with i suppose you know i'm not like super proud of this vehicle design but i think i salvaged it to a degree where i felt that it was it was passable but i would have saved myself a lot of that pain and probably would have ended up with a with an even stronger design if i hadn't skipped those those design steps right again it's very uh, for my future iteration for my future pieces if i were to do something like this which is again it's a very very sci-fi oriented vehicle um nothing like this really exists which all the more um makes the early stages more necessary right like asking questions like what does this vehicle do like where is it taking place what is its what is its purpose right asking those questions and then generating some really low cost low iteration or like sorry low cost but in lots of different iterations that i can experiment with before committing to something um we know with a full scene and a fully lit scene right because the cost for turnaround at this point the cost for iteration at this point is is a lot more costly and it's a, a lot a lot harder to to kind of um make changes and make big pivots to the design when you jump ahead too far and i really hope that makes that makes sense but basically the lesson of the day really is to you know if you're making something um that is super imaginary that nothing in the uh, that doesn't really exist currently in the world you should definitely do a lot of research first ask yourself a lot of questions and start very very low cost right do a lot of thumbnails first And so here I'm trying to really find different ways to make the silhouette a little bit more interesting than what the block out pro had provided me. And here I'm also looking at a lot of references for um, industrial, like heavy machinery. But as I mentioned in, in the beginning that the base blockout was really based on a, on a on a military vehicle right and now i'm trying to sort of like um pivot and change direction to a more of a industrial vehicle and so again that's where the thumbnailing comes in and sort of asking at the very beginning what the purpose of of, of the design is to begin with But yeah, so you've noticed now that I've, I've sort of kind of gotten to, uh, you know, I'd say like a satisfactory, satisfactory design here. I've moved the sort of the drivers, um, the driver, the driver's canopy, I guess, um, from like the middle of the the vehicle to the front. Kind of giving giving it more of that industrial machinery industry uh industrial mining vehicle kind of vibe i 
And at this point, I, I feel like I sort of salvaged the, the, the design a little bit, right? Like I've struggled a lot with it. And now I'm feeling that I'm ending up somewhere that I can at least come up with something that, you know, was not a complete disaster, I suppose. And yeah, again, one, another reason to, to use ready-made assets like I did here is because, you know, I wanted, I wanted everything else in the scene to be very low investment. I didn't really want to spend too much time painting over the rocks or, or texturing the rocks or anything like that, because I knew that, that coming into this piece that I wanted most of my time to be spent on the on the vehicle itself right so it's like why would i make a a rock from scratch right and in a, in a production setting where you know if you're a concept artist and you work in the games industry or the film industry there are deadlines right and you're going to want to use the tools that you have at your disposal to to make things quicker you know, and, and the whole point of, of concept is to, to get the point across, right? You know, you're not necessarily going to be like making a, a, a beautiful piece all around, right? Like the, the point of concept art is to get the point across and, and get a certain vibe quickly and, and efficiently. With that said, again, if, if your if your job as a concept artist is to design the rocks, right, then that's something you're probably going to want to start completely from scratch, right? I hope that makes sense. There's there's a def definite distinction uh, between the two approaches there, and I hope that it's it's clear. Yeah, here, still trying to experiment with some things, trying to make the, the design more interesting here. Trying to put some elements in the undercarriage, you know, trying to play with values, kind of like making the, the undercarriage very subtle and very dark but at the same time giving it uh some elements that kind of let you think that there's something going on right even if it's not super noticeable you know and i think that's sort of like um like the key to creating a, a strong piece is sort of like finding the balance between subtlety and and something that screams at you And kind of like knowing when to use that right like when to use contrast and where to apply the the noise and where to apply the the frequency so that you can lead the viewer's eye to where you want it to go and now here i'm starting to feel that you know the design is as good as it can be at this point and now i'm just adding really the the finishing touches here and as always uh an accent color really, really helps push the, uh, the design a couple notches up.
Yeah, I think, you know, adding a couple characters in there for scale, giving it a bit of an environment to, to sit in, you know, as opposed to it just being a, a, a vehicle design on its own. It kind of, um, you know, at least the hope is that it, it gives you a little bit of curiosity, you know, like, why is it, why is it sitting there? Like, who are these, these, these people driving it, right? Like, why are they stopped? Why are they outside? Where is this world? Is this, is this on earth or is it in a different planet? Right? So adding just like these various elements really kind of makes things a little bit more interesting and, and, and hopefully if you do a, a good enough job it's something that makes people want to see more right Now here, just really cleaning up the scene, adding the final touches to it. Now removing some parts that, you know, I, I wasn't really feeling was contributing to the to the piece and yeah at this point calling this done it was fun at the end hope you enjoyed watching this video please like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one